Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome, uh, all of you. This is a fantastic crowd. Thank you all for coming out. I am Lisa Muscatine. I'm one of the owners of Politics and Prose, along with my husband, Brad Graham, who's lurking around here somewhere. Oh, he's over there. Um, and on behalf of our fantastic staff, we uh, welcome you to this evening's event with David Brock and Ari Rabin Haft, who will talk about their new book, The Fox Effect, How Roger Ailes Turned a Network into a Propaganda Machine. Um, uh, before we get started, just a few rules of the road. Um, if you have a cell phone on, now would be an excellent time to uh, turn it to buzz or silent. Um, and we also ask two things. One, at the end of the event, uh, David and Ari will be signing books. We ask that you start the line here and move this way through the signing table. If you could fold up your chairs and place them to the side of the room, that will make everybody's lives much better. Um, and we also ask that during the question and answer session, if you would please go to the microphones right here. Uh, that's because we record all of the events, and as you can probably tell, C-SPAN is also here. Um, and it would be helpful if everyone can hear your questions. And please, if you don't mind, and as a courtesy to our guests, state your name at the beginning of your question. Um, those of you who are regulars at Politics and Prose know that we are an independent local bookstore. We also think of ourselves as more than a bookstore. Uh, we believe very deeply in building community. Um, and tonight's event is one of those efforts. We have about 475 author events each year along with courses and classes and other programs and book groups. And we also, by the way, are about to launch literary trips. Um, if you're new to the store or if you are a C-SPAN viewer who is more interested in the store and our events and our programs, you can uh, get our email once a week, which uh, can be done by signing up at our information desk or going to our website, which is www.politics-pros.com. Many people also don't realize that you can order books from us online, and you can also order ebooks and download them from our website. So please feel free to use any and all of those services. Um, we thank you for being here on this almost spring night and for supporting our mission to provide a forum for civic discourse of the important issues of the day. And what better time than a presidential election year uh, to examine the political influence of one of the most powerful television networks in the media age? Fox News and how that network is shaping, some might say misshaping, uh, the American political landscape. And what better authors than David Brock, the founder and chairman of Media Matters, and Ari Robin Hoff to share insights formed during many years of research on this subject. Uh, I meant to say that Ari is the executive vice president of Media Matters. Um, for those of you who don't know David Brock, this is I think his fifth book, mostly focusing on the rise of the right wing media and its role in our nation's political life. David is very unusual in the personal perspectives and experiences he brings to his work. Um, and if any of you read, as I did, his, his memoir published in 2002 called Blinded by the Right, um, you'll know that he was for nearly a decade the star of, indeed a creature of, the very propaganda machines that he later chose to expose. Uh, indeed, Blinded by the Right was the was one of the first, first-hand accounts of the far right wing's orchestrated, well-funded, and zealous efforts to bring down the presidency of Bill Clinton. Um, Ari Robin Hoft is a veteran of democratic politics, having advised Harry Reid, Al Gore, and John Kerry, worked for the DNC. He's also worked extensively with organizations such as ACLU and Planned Parenthood, and he currently teaches at GW's Graduate School of, Public, uh, sorry, of Political Management. Uh, now they have turned their attention to Fox News and more specifically the man who runs it, Roger Ailes. From his roots as a non-news television producer to his stint as a Nixon media advisor who, according to one colleague, operated at two speeds, attack and destroy, <laughs> to his stewardship of a network that has been accused of foregoing journalistic standards to become an unapologetic mouthpiece, indeed an unofficial political arm of the Republican Party and the Republican right, Ailes is the protagonist of the story that David and Ari tell in The Fox Effect. Ailes' unrivaled authority at Fox News and the free reign that News Corps Chairman Rupert Murdoch grants him, as well as the network's reliance on inflammatory language, rumor, and unsubstantiated information are among the subjects that David and Ari explore in this well-researched and extensively footnoted book. Um, just before I end, and in case you're wondering, going after Fox News does have some uh, personal costs. 
While Fox has long sought to discredit Media Matters, the network has most recently waged a new campaign encouraging its audience to file complaints with the IRS about Media Matters and has also launched personal attacks on the authors, even at one point inviting a psychiatrist on the air to assess David's mental health. The doctor's conclusion, David Brock is a very dangerous man. Um, I will say no more, except I really encourage you all to read the book. I hope you will buy it. We have plenty of copies up at the front. And please join me in welcoming David Brock and Ari Robin Hopp. Thank you, and thank you for that great introduction. Uh, and welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm glad you're all here tonight uh, to hear about our new book. Um, before we get into the book, I just thought I'd say a few words about Media Matters um, for those of you who are not familiar with it, and we'd like you to be familiar with it. Uh, I founded the organization in 2004 uh, to monitor, analyze, and correct conservative misinformation in the media. We were basically trying to solve two problems. One was the rise of explicitly right-wing media over the past 20 to 25 years. Uh, we all know what that is, places like the Washington Times, most of talk radio, and of course the Fox News Channel. Uh, and those media institutions were operating with total impunity and zero accountability before Media Matters came along to shine the light on what was going on in those uh, institutions. So that was half the problem. The other half of the problem was the mainstream media and the fact that it is and it was and it continues to be under concerted attack from or the organized right. Um, the effect of that is that uh, uh, to avoid the label of liberal media bias, um, the press all too often uh, uh, bends over backwards to accommodate uh, conservative demands. Um, and we see that in the imbalance in our op-ed pages. Um, and we also see that, uh, you know, in the kind of a rigged uh, cable debate that we see uh, and in various other places in the media. So we were also trying to address that. And uh, when we started, there really wasn't an organization that had built a professional uh, way for uh, people other than the right wing to have their concerns uh, addressed directly in the media. And so part of uh, what we encourage folks to do is to engage with our work. Uh, there are action tools attached to the research that we publish. The research uh, is across a broad range of issues uh, from uh, choice to LGBT issues to climate change. Uh, we've got a staff working 24-7 uh, in offices over near Capitol Hill. Uh, and they're documenting every day and pushing back against various forms of uh, what we consider to be conservative misinformation. And we'd like you to engage in that with us. Um, check out our website at mediamatters.org. Um, so with that, uh, one of the things we do at Media Matters is we watch Fox so you don't have to. <laughs> and in watching Fox over these last few years, we noticed something. Uh, the original model of Fox, which seemed to be putting conservative talk radio on TV was morphing into something, they call me dangerous, I will say that they are dangerous, uh, into something more dangerous, into a partisan political operation, uh, a hardcore uh, partisan operation uh, under the false flag of journalism and the phony uh, phrase of fair and balanced. Uh, it has many elements to it that we explore in the book, um, uh, and they're elements that one doesn't normally see uh, in media, even in conservative media. Um, and that ranges from the raising of money for Republican candidates and causes, uh, both on Fox Air and off. Uh, we all know that Fox is a powerful uh, deliverer of the Republican message. Uh, and they're also involved in mobilization. Um, they uh, were actively involved in fomenting the early Tea Party protests in April 2009, as we document in the book. Um, so with that, I wanted to turn this over to Ari to talk a little bit more about why we got into this book, uh, how we worked on it, and, and what the execution was like. Thanks. Sure. Uh, this book, I want to say, uh, David and I are the authors on the cover, but you'll notice we put and Media Matters for America. And the reason we did that was because, is this mic on? All right. The reason we did that was because, you know, this work was based on our research staff, on our on our amazing research staff who had done, you know, who sit watching Fox, who analyze it, who correct misinformation, who dug into it. And their work is so fundamental to our book that all of them, you know, are authors of this. So this, this is really a, a group effort. Um, the core of the book 
what makes up the real kind of evidence is a series of emails that were leaked to us from inside Fox News that 